Back in the 90s, they were getting pushed out by urban sprawl, high land prices, people coming in from the cities. We were about an hour outside of Seattle. So they decided to sell their cows, and instead of selling their land to be developed, they actually turned it into a golf course. So we started mowing our pastures, they built greens, and we opened it up to the public for a golf course. There was only one hazard on the golf course, and that was the manure pit that had been there forever. <laughs> so we had to put a sign that said, don't get your golf balls out of here. <laughs> and then uh, while we were uh, transitioning from dairy farming, a lot of our community in Washington State were moving to Barron County, Wisconsin. So we, my oldest brother followed them to Wisconsin. Once he started having children, then of course we all had to come up so we could be with the boys. I have now four uh, grands, or not grandsons, sorry. <laughs> four nephews, and maybe you've seen them grow up a little bit on our television series, it's so fun. I do uh, farmer's markets in different places and I got to take my two little boys, who are not so little anymore, with me. And people would come up and say, oh, I recognize you from TV, and they just, oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, and then, uh, so we started dairy farming uh, on my little farm in Osseo, and I just fell in love with it. I used to always milk about 40 or 50 cows. I was kind of uh, testing my limits on my land because I do rotational grazing, and I was running out of land a little bit with that many cows. So, after years of shipping milk to Organic Valley and Westby Creamery down here, we decided a few years ago to downsize the herd. Uh, I have six cows today. I'm adding on four more on Monday, so we're expanding hugely on the farm. And we make a cheese right there on the farm. My dad and I, uh, he, 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 he has to come out and help me because that's what dads do. <laughs> so, and he's also the producer of Around the Farm Table. We're the co-creators together. One day, years and years ago, we were out milking cows and we were talking about how diverse Wisconsin is with its food. Do you know that we're the number one producers of goat's milk in the nation? Uh, I think we're like third or fourth for cow's milk, but we're number one for goat's milk. We are one of the biggest exporters of cranberries, uh, ginseng, uh, horseradish. I think we're the number one producer of horseradish. And we are the home of America's first pumpkin seed oil. I'm not sure if you all got to uh, catch our last episode, but yeah, two of my friends, they do this beautiful pumpkin seed oil. I wish I would have brought some today to, uh, and you guys can taste it. It is just delicious. It's one of my favorite ingredients for cooking with because it just elevates anything that you're cooking. So I really love it. But once we kind of were discovering mm. the diversity of what's happening here, and I lived on the West Coast, I'd also lived on the East Coast, just outside of Washington, D.C. And I don't know if you know this, but people on the West Coast and the East Coast, they just call us the flyover states, right? They think there's nothing here. And I just thought, well, it's probably good so they don't move here, but it's like the most abundant place to be living and to have local food and local agriculture. So we said, my dad said to me while we're milking, we should do a TV show. And we'll go around the state of Wisconsin We'll gather ingredients and then you'll cook at the end. And I was like, well, all right, let's, I'm not doing anything tomorrow, so let's do it. Uh, and so we gathered up, we, we hired a kid in high school, because uh, we're not technically inclined at all. He brought his camera out, we started filming with some friends of ours around the state. We sent in our short videos to PBS Wisconsin, and they said, okay, well, what's your experience? And we said, well, we're dairy farmers. You know, they said, well, with TV, we'll, we'll figure it out. And that was, uh, I think, eight seasons ago. We're just getting ready to go into uh, filming this summer for our ninth season. So we made it all work, and we're so glad we did. It's been so fun to be able to see the state of Wisconsin through being able to tour farms and just drive in all the different areas of Wisconsin. They're so different and so beautiful. So I'm really glad that I'm living here. I have no plans of ever moving anywhere ever again. And Wisconsin also does have the most incredible people. Give yourselves a hand. Thank you. So I wanted to make for you today one of my favorite new recipes. It's called a bacon, potato, and cheddar tart. Uh, so if you have Heart problems, you might want to leave now just looking at it. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, but my mom's always like, can't you make something healthy? And I'm like, yeah, bacon makes everything taste so good, mom. <laughs> so, uh, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna add a little bit of healthiness to this tart by adding some fresh herbs and some kale. Last year in my garden, I'm so excited for gardening season. This morning was like the first nice day in Osseo, in here too. I was like, walked outside, ripped my boots off, you know, ripped my socks off. I'm like, I can finally go barefoot in the lawn. But I've, I'm letting my chickens out in the lawn as well. So there is some, uh, <laughs> some downsides when you're barefoot walking out there. But it was like, I cannot wait to start gardening again. I am just over the moon of wanting to do that. So for this tart, what we're going to do is we're going to start with heating up my little pan here. And if you have any questions, because I haven't really been around people in a long time, so I forget that people have to, like, I have to make sense with my sentences. So if I'm not making sense, just yell out at me. So I brought my dad, not my mom. My mom's, she has no problem yelling at me, but my dad's my mom, so. <laughs> I was a perfect child, too. <laughs> So first of all, I'm going to take my onion, and I actually purchased a big old chunk of onions from a friend of mine last fall, and so I have three left for the, that got me through. So it's like all the, like I love having that. I love being able to go down to the basement, grab my food, knowing that it, the money I spend is supporting my friend who's a farmer, and I don't have to go to the grocery store, and I know it's, uh, he raises them organically, and it just makes me really happy. I think it, maybe also with the pandemic, I think a lot more people are thinking about where their food is coming from, and is it healthy, what, you know, we need to feed our immune systems and our bodies, and that's one of the great benefits of going to the farmer's market, get, signing up for a CSA, or really growing your own food is, there's so much more nutrition in that food. I was just listening to something, and it was saying how the, our conventional broccoli that we get at the store has like 70% less nutritional value than it did like 30 years ago because of the way we're growing things and we're not feeding our soils and things like that. So when you're finding, when you're shopping with small farmers, they're, a lot of the times, composting, feeding that soil, putting in cover crops, so the food that they're growing is a lot more nutritious than you can pick up at a festival, right? Uh, one, I met this woman years ago, and she said something that really stuck with me. She said, you can't have healthy people without healthy food, and you cannot have healthy food without healthy soil. And it really stuck with me, and it really kind of, just, I, I, I started thinking about my ground, my grass, and my soil so differently after hearing that. All right. I kind of love the acoustics. It like, makes me seem like I'm doing a lot more chopping than I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. I, had a, I always feel weird when I'm chopping things in front of people because I have terrible knife skills. I was not trained in the culinary fields. Uh, I'm still trying to get a, a, a knack of chopping onions and things. And I had a woman years ago email me and she said, I'm really worried that you're gonna cut your finger off. I'm hoping that you can figure out your knife skills. But all my community is farmers. They're all these, you know, kind of, no offense, but old men farmers. I mean, the average age of a farmer in Wisconsin, or the United States, I think is 70 plus. And so these are all the guys I gather with in the morning to have coffee. I'm the only one with 10 fingers, so. <laughs> so I thought, if I do chop off my finger, I am gonna fit right into my group, you know? <laughs> all right. Chop up my onion here. It's, uh, I uh, married my husband, I don't know, like seven or eight years, I don't remember how long ago, but I remember I, would always tell them, I'm like, you know, farming is the most dangerous occupation you could ever have. And he's like, really? I'm like, ah, I, you better hope I come back a lot today. And he's like, oh, come on. <laughs> and then it's like the cows come up and they're like rubbing their head against me. Like, the cows kill more people than sharks. And my husband's like, you're so <laughs> I was, my cows are, I love my cows so much. They all have a name and their own personalities. And they need, they need a lot of attention. I milk jerseys 
Did anyone grow up in Milky House? All right. Do you guys want to do any Milky's for me this summer? A little bit of a break, let me know. Uh, so I have jerseys. They have the beautiful eyelashes. And they're all very friendly and they kind of have their own personality. And I have the so Sundance. She's like my youngest kind of cow. I raised her from a calf and we're very close to the point where every time I bend over to put a unit on the cow next to her, she now she thinks that she's still a cow. She will literally lift me up with her head. I am not a light person. <laughs> Jeez. God, I should make her an ox. Like <laughs> start pulling things around. It's just amazing. All right, so I'm going to pop this in here for a sizzle. And then I'm going to chop up some kale. Yeah, so last, last year I grew so much kale because I was like, I'm going to eat kale every day. I mean, I'm going to do smoothies, I'm going to do salads, I mean, just kale chips, everything kale. Uh, so my chickens ate a lot of kale last year. <laughs> <laughs> and they're really healthy for it. And I still have a lot frozen in my freezer that I'll add to soups and different things like that. So I'm just going to roughly chop. I never measure anything. I, it's like I'm allergic to measuring things. Because it's, you know, whatever you have on hand. And where I live, it's a little bit of a ways to get to a grocery store. I have to go to La Crosse or Eau Claire to a grocery store. So I have to kind of be inventive when I... Hold on, if you're going to take a picture, I just want to pose. <laughs> what I can get to, right? So I say a bunch of, however much uh, kale you want to use up is what you should put in here. <laughs> Any questions so far? What was the oil that you used? Oh, the oil that I used? I just used uh, olive oil. Um, I would recommend using sunflower oil. There's from Driftless, what is Driftless Organics? Does anyone use their sunflower oil? Yeah, that's what I would do. I'm going to the co-op after this to pick up groceries. So I love their oil. I love their family. If anyone, does anyone familiar with them? Their father was an organic certifier for many years. And I think he was kind of one of the pioneers to help start Organic Valley back in the 80s. And he was my organic certifier for years and years. And he helped walk me through the process of what that means to be certified organic how to keep the paperwork. I actually bought some cows from them. Uh, just a lovely, lovely family. And unfortunately, he passed away a few years ago. Uh, but it's, they're just amazing. And talking about feeding the soil, that's a farm that knows what they're doing. I think they've been organic for ever. Uh, and they just have such a beautiful farm down in Soldiers Grove. And that's another thing, like, oh, we can have pumpkin seed oil here. Like, isn't that amazing? Like, we can have local oil. Like, most of our ingredients we can get right here. Where can you get the pumpkin seed oil? Where can you get the pumpkin seed oil? Uh, they have it on their website, hayriverpumpkinseedoil.com. I'm not sure if they carry it at the co-op here. They do carry it at the co-ops in Eau Claire. Uh, but they'll, they'll ship it right to you, like in a day, they'll, they'll get it shipped out to you. They're really good about that. And we are having them, we're having a fall festival September 18th at our farm, and they're going to be coming with some of their oil too. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to let that do its thing. And then I'm going to cut up a little bit of parsley. Mm -hmm. I should have brought some chives. I see my chives are kind of going nuts in the garden right now. But any kind of mix of herbs you have, if you have some basil, if you're making this in the summertime, I would cut up some basil. This is all going to make sense when we put it together. Basil, or rosemary. The great thing about being on TV is when I forget what I'm, my thought is, then they can just be like, all right, take two. We're going to edit that out. <laughs> Life is always like, oh, that's right. Or if I'm like adjusting things. The first time I ever did a cooking demonstration, Years and years ago, I had no experience doing demonstrations, or and I had I shouldn't have been doing it in the first place. But I was at Garden Expo. It's a, a event that PBS puts on every year, and I had on these skinny jeans, and like I shouldn't have been wearing these jeans. They were way too tight. Uh, I actually thought there was, I pulled them out of the dryer that morning. I put them on, and I actually told my husband. I said, I think there's something. I think our dryer is running too hot. <laughs> yeah. I honestly thought that, right? And he was like, I think it's the refrigerator, actually. 
country. <laughs> so, but I, so I go down to the Madison and I've got this huge group of people and I'm cooking away and my little poor pants are shimmering right on down. And I was like, I'm not gonna pull my pants up. You know, I, was, I was exposed, you know? And I didn't realize it, but I had a whole year reflecting back. And then like, I turned around and then I like, looked back and everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> you think somebody would have said something, right? <laughs> so they got a lot more than they were coming for. <laughs> But after that, I started wearing overalls for like a long time. And I, this guy, these farmers, you know, they said, well, why are you wearing overalls? And I just was like, well, we don't want to bend you over as farmers. And they're like, well, we're not gonna worry. I'm like, you should. You <laughs> should. It's not a bad idea. All right, rough chop with my rosemary here. They say a house, if you have rosemary growing, if it grows well, the women are in charge, and if it doesn't grow well, the men are in charge. <laughs> but I thought it's more about humidity in the house, if you're going to the house. Because <laughs> I was like, my rosemary just completely died this winter. I had it for a few years, and I had it in the house, and I forgot to put water on the bottom of the pan to get humidity going, and so it died, and my husband's like, oh, look at that. I guess like, you're never going to be in charge, like, ever. Okay. So I'm going to toss, actually I'm going to toss it right in here. So I've got my wilted uh, kale, my onions, and my olive oil, and this is my filling layers for my tart. So I'm going to set that right there. I'm going to add in my herbs. I always like to do one pan cooking because I also do dishes. I would, when I first moved to Wisconsin, I was 24. And I moved back in with my parents after not having lived with them for a while. It was the best thing I've ever done. Like all of a sudden there used to be groceries like in the refrigerator. <laughs> Bills were paid for. Like <laughs> my mom would like fold my clothes and then like put them on the kitchen table. And I'd be like, you can't take them to my room, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like so great. And I would make these like multi-course dinners. We've always been a cooking kind of family. And I would make all these, you know, use every dish in the house. But I had my mom and my dad to help me with cleaning everything up. But now that I don't have them, I'm like, do you guys want to move back in? I don't know. <laughs> Just think about it. But they are going to be building a house up on top of our property. So I'll have them close. And I'll take my laundry up there, I guess. <laughs> I'll set this up with the side so you can see it. So my next ingredient that's gonna go into my filling is our cheese that we make on our farm. It's called St. Isidore's Dairy. We will be at the farmer's market down here in La Crosse on Friday nights, I believe. And I think start, I think we're gonna to try to make it to the first, that's like two weeks from now. Yeah. All right, I better write that down on my calendar. <laughs> so, and what, we just do one style of cheese because we have such a small group of animals. And I wanted to have a small group of animals so that we could graze the cows throughout the farm. What happens when those cows are rotationally grazed, which means they're moved to fresh pasture every 12 hours, those cows are hauling their own manure, they're harvesting their own feed, they're eating a diverse array of, their, their diet is diverse. We add in a little bit of clover every now and then, they're getting whatever the farmer 20 years ago planted, some native grasses, so they're getting a variety in their diet while they're grazing. While they're grazing as well, because I'm not bringing in tractors to manually harvest that grass, the, it, the pastures allow for, what am I trying to say? The, it's habitat for all the native birds, the grass and bird species that need pasture to graze it, or to, what am I trying to say? To live it, nest it, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> and it also, what, what also is great about the pastures this time of the year is pretty soon we're gonna have all of these amazing dandelions coming out, right? And the dandelions are one of the first food that the bees can get to. And as we've seen a lot of these smaller family dairy farms disappearing that would always have pasture for the cows, we're seeing a decline in the birds, in the insects, and all of these things. 
So it's important to me not only to take care of the cows on our farm, but also to take care of the landscape, all the different species that live on our farm. Uh, it's just, it, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to be out there this time of the year and you just hear so much happening. All of these different sounds of nature happening. And it's my, one of my favorite parts about farming is just being a part of that nature. That's my long way of saying we pasture our cows. <laughs> And we just do the one style of cheese, which is a cheddar. This cheese, I think we made in uh, early winter. It's got a lighter color to it. I brought some other cheese too from June of 2020. That's beautiful. But what the cows are eating dictates the color of the cheese. So in May, when the cows are on that rich pasture, the cheese will just get almost like orange. And it's because the cows can't, sorry, I have to itch. Cut. Um, the cows can't digest the beta carotene in the grasses, so they put that into the milk, and that's what gives the cheese a beautiful color. So it's another way of knowing, like, oh, yeah, there's no color out of this is good cheese. And this cheese has been aging for just over a year. We do a natural rind on our cheese, so we wrap the cheese in cheesecloth while it ages so that it can breathe and age naturally. We use the same recipe as people have been using since the first person made cheddar cheese. So, uh, and I love it. I mean, I'm really proud of what we do. And I get to work with my dad too, so that's fun for me. <laughs> I mean, I think he likes it too. <laughs> so I'm just gonna grate up some cheese. I just get a little bit nervous when my table starts shifting. <laughs> One of these days it's just gonna go. And this is about a quarter pound of cheese that I'm grating up. You could use a Parmesan if you'd like. You could use any kind of hard cheese. I would even try, you know, just experimenting with different cheeses that you have on hand. Again, don't make a special trip to the grocery store, but you can make a special trip to the farmer's market on Friday nights. <laughs> so I'm gonna add my cheese right to my filling here. I'm gonna set this up back to the side. And yes. Do they sell your cheese at the co-op here in town? No, they don't. And we're, I'm trying. We, you can purchase it online at Fromage Nation from Madison. So because I'm trying to sell it direct to people or at higher end cheese shops where they are able to cut it to order, just because it's kind of a special sort of it's. I want to keep the integrity of the cheese after all, you know? Okay, so now I'm going to take my potatoes. I use red potatoes. And if you're growing potatoes this year, this is the recipe you want to use when your potatoes are coming out of the ground. It makes the potatoes just like melt in your mouth good. And you can, I'm using bacon today, but you could make this vegetarian. But why? But why, exactly. <laughs> I know. If you don't like life, I mean, <laughs> I grew up vegetarian. My dad has been a vegetarian for, like what dad? 52 years. <laughs> so I only started eating meat, uh, I guess in my 20s when I started raising my own meat. And I'm kind of picky about the meat that I eat. Uh, but we, I was raised on lentils. <laughs> I would go, I remember my first sleepover, I went to my friend's house and they had uh, Wonder Bread. Oh my gosh, I thought she was the luckiest girl in the world that I had Wonder Bread. My mom like ground, you know, the grains herself and like baked a loaf every morning. And I was just was like, oh, I, I wish I could come live here. It's just abusive of my house. We had to dig potatoes out of the garden if we want mashed potatoes, you know. And now I realize that they were, my parents were okay. <laughs> so I've got my cast iron skillet here. I like to use a smaller skillet. This is a dish that's great for brunch, lunch, dinner, whatever. I'm going to take my uh, bacon and I'm going to shimmy it around my pan. So I have a little bit on the inside. I'll show you guys this when I get it. Shingling is maybe the right word? I don't know. Sometimes I, one of the hardest parts about filming for television is I mispronounce things all the time and they're like, that's not even a word. Can we go back? Can you say the real word? 
<laughs> Wish I would have known that 20 years ago. <laughs> so I'm going to shingle this right around. And, and pork is something I definitely like to buy local when I can. We have a great farm in Osseo, so I can go there to get my pork when I need it. But again, we, I really don't need that much meat on the farm. My husband, he's an avid hunter. He's turkey hunting today. He loves hunting, uh, but he refuses to eat any animals that he's looked in the eye of and petted and fed milk. So we kind of had to stop raising steers because he's like, I can't. And he's like, and then I'm supposed to make a hamburger on the grill and they're looking at me? <laughs> that was one of their sons. Yeah, I'm like, it's fine, they'll get over it. <laughs> so here's what I did to, I love it. This is so gross. <laughs> Uh, so this is what it looks like in the pan, and I'm using about a pound of bacon. Depending on the bacon, some are longer strips, so it'll fill up the whole bottom, but I don't think you need it that much. All right. And then I'm going to take a layer of potatoes, and I'm going to shingle that around again, and I'll hold this up one more time. Yeah, I go have coffee with all the other farmers occasionally, and so I take this up every once in a while, and they're like, you can come anytime. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So I just covered the bottom of my pan with the potatoes. This is kind of a workout on this thing. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put some of my filling on top. Oh, I forgot salt and pepper. Well, let's pretend we have salt and pepper. Salt, <laughs> salt, pepper, pepper. <laughs> And then I'm going to put some garlic in, too. It's fun having an audience who listens, you know? My husband can be like, oh, how many stories are you going to tell me today? Like, this is, you guys can't go anywhere. I love it. So I'm going to take a clove of garlic, get the skins off, and then I'm going to take, this is my new favorite thing to do, take my micro planer, and instead of chopping the garlic, is I just microplane it into my dish. I think it adds, it, it's not, you know like sometimes when you're eating something that you chop garlic in, it's like you just bite a chunk of the garlic. You don't do that with this. And it's fun and I feel like it's less clean up too than having to sit there and chop everything. So, microplane in my garlic. And you could do a couple cloves if you'd like. My neighbors, I love them. I have two neighbors, they're brothers. Uh, they're both in their 70s and they both dairy farm forever. One owns the 500 acres of land on the side of me. The other owns the you know, 200 acres of land on the side of me. But they both think they own the middle part too. <laughs> and they're not afraid to give me their opinion on what exactly I should be doing and how I should be doing it. And I was just thinking, they, so they'll say, oh, when I cook for them, they'll say, oh, we don't like garlic. Like, you guys, I've been cooking garlic for years and you've never said anything. So. But uh, they're such great guys. My one neighbor, he's going to semi-retire now. Uh, this is, I just love my little community. I went to the grocery store a few years ago after my parents moved to town. And I come home, he's got his uh, front and loader tractor pulling out some uh, shrubs from in front of my house. And I said, what are you doing? I've been wanting to do that for years. <laughs> I was like, I can't do that. I, go, hey, I was like, I, but this is my house. And he's like, I don't care. It's going to look a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> and we have them there often on the end of our programs during the eating scenes. And so uh, <laughs> they're just, my neighbor Tom, he'll come down and he's like, do my hair, get my hair done. Do I need powder? I'm like, no one's going to notice. <laughs> And then you kind of macho guys a little bit. So I'm gonna take about, you can do as many layers of the potatoes and mixture as you have. But I think I'll just do half of the mixture in here. And I'm gonna punch that down. I'll put on some more potatoes. Hold on here. And I don't use a mandolin anymore because I lost all the tips of my fingers and a mandolin. So I just try to slice as thinly as possible. 
If you want them thin or thick, it doesn't matter, just make sure you have consistent slices on your potatoes so they cook properly. All right. Oh, I'm gonna show this to you again. I'm gonna use my other pan so I can get work out both sides. <laughs> So I'm just layering potatoes, filling, potatoes, filling. And my last filling. And this recipe is on Wisconsin, or pbswisconsin.org. And there is a video along with it too. Okay, and then now I'm going to, I feel like we should get up and huddle and look at it, but I'm going to, Put my tart to bed by layering my bacon over the top of everything. I always think of like, this little piggy went to the market whenever I'm doing this. I didn't realize that when they said this little piggy went to the market, it was not going to shop. I thought that until like two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this is what they're telling the kids. This is like a little song, all right. So once you get all your filling in there, you can wrap it in the bacon. And doesn't look kind of fun for just like, you know, like a fun brunch or, you know, just to have. Yeah. And then you bake that at 400 for about 45 minutes to an hour. And here's what it looks like when it kind of comes out. When you're not talking, it, you can do it in five minutes. So it's a really nice, easy recipe to do that way. And then I'm going to show you guys one more. Really quick. Step the past away. Cut, take two. <laughs> Regardless of the year, regardless of the steers, whenever the asparagus comes up, they always get out of their pasture and end up in the asparagus. And it drives me crazy, but I'm not gonna say anything because my neighbors are crazier than, than uh, me, so I don't wanna upset them. All right. So I'm gonna take about a pound of asparagus, and I'm just, this is a really simple recipe. Again, you can make this whole meal in five minutes. Oh, there. You know how you do asparagus? You guys know this? Yeah. The, yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna use my vegetable peeler. I'm not cooking my asparagus at all. Everything is raw. It worked out so much better at home. <laughs> running up here. <laughs> so we're just going to shape the asparagus. Just do this. He's better at making cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> so and for the dressing it's going to be super super simple. I've got my lemon Oops. here. This is kind of fun because usually my dad is like directing me and being like you're not doing this right. So I'm going to take this opportunity. <laughs> yeah, I can also slice them up too, just to give you the idea of what it is. Did you roll that lemon? What was that? Oh, I just always do like a roll in my lemon just to get the juices out a little bit more. Does anybody put it in the microwave? Yeah, does it work really well? Okay. 30 seconds. Yeah, I'm going to start doing that. So yeah, I just do a little bit of a roll. All right. Dan, do you move so they can... Never mind. <laughs> I should have a box over there. 
<laughs> so my go-to. I really don't know what I'm. Mean. That's why you can just. Are <laughs> <laughs> seriously? Oh. You're embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> salad dressing. When I was a kid, my mom taught us how to make our own salad dressing. Like that was the first thing that we made because salad dressings are so full of sugar and canola oil and all this bad stuff. You'd think I'd be healthier having grown up with parents who like are always thinking about this, but uh, maybe this year. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little bit of Dijon mustard. This is kind of my base for any of my salad dressings. It gives it that nice umami flavor and it adds a lot of other flavors to it. I'm not going to make a lot, so I'll just put about a teaspoon and a half there. Squeeze my lemon in. Oh, uh, where's the garlic? And I'm going to microclaim the garlic. I thought this was going to look so much prettier today. <laughs> I'll microclaim my garlic really quick. One of my worst habits is not using a cutting board at my house and it dulls my knives like crazy. But the best part is when my mom comes over, it drives her absolutely crazy. <laughs> so it's like kind of a fun afternoon. <laughs> I'm really, I turned 40 this year and I'm realizing that no matter how old I'm getting, my mom still is my mom. And she's gonna say, don't cut that on the couch, <laughs> you're gonna ruin them. <laughs> So I'm gonna microplane in my garlic because I love garlic. I used to grow about a quarter acre garlic and it got to be a lot. Oh, my parents got sick of helping me weed the garlic so we got rid of it. And then I'm just gonna to toss, so garlic, again I forgot my salt and pepper. Garlic, salt, pepper, lemon juice or vinegar, like I would use a balsamic vinegar or apple cider vinegar. And a little bit of olive oil. And so on Sundays, I do a lot of cooking to get ready for the week. So when I get it from the barn, I don't have to like cook everything. And my husband's a terrible cook. Uh, on one of our first dates, he invited me to his house for dinner. This is after I had a show about food and everything. And his idea for dinner was, I think he made a chicken or something. And the side dish was roasted peanuts mixed with mayonnaise. That was it. And I still hear you. <laughs> so I do the cooking in the house. <laughs> uh, but uh, so I, on Sundays, I'll make up a big jar of dressing so that I can use it all week. And if I want to, I can marinate a, uh, well, we're just gonna pretend. We're all friends now. Let's just pretend this is all shorted out. Uh, you can use it to marinate chicken with, you can use it for salads, dips, whatever, and it's already there, done and made, so you don't have to buy salad dressings. And then I would do, where's my grater again? A Parmesan, or I put cheddar on it because I have cheddar in my house at all times. Another tip, tip for eating nice cheeses is bring them to room temperature before you're eating them, and it really helps the flavors develop and come out and be the true taste. So you can use Parmesan if you'd like. You can put some pine nuts in here too, and serve this on a bed of, again, I thought this was gonna turn out a lot prettier because it did yesterday when I was doing it. You can put this on a bed of lettuce as well. And then just do a little bit of your dressing or a lot in one spot, make it nice. <laughs> and then you've got your little asparagus salad and just kind of something fun because it's springtime. So that is the tart and the uh, beautiful asparagus salad. <laughs> uh, does anybody have any questions? I was wondering now, you, you have about six cows. When, when you have calves, do you keep your calves? I do, so I keep the calves with the, so what I've been doing, because I don't need a lot of animals, my cows will live to be 15, 16, 17 years old. So uh, when I breed my cows, I breed them back to a beef cow, a black Angus. So they're Jersey black Angus calves. That way I can, a lot of people want to be raising their own meat this, you know, these days. So I, but I keep the cows and the calves together for two to three months 
And what happens is during those two to three months, the cows are, this is like, you know, kind of, I, my brother's a dairy farmer. I will never tell him that I raise my cows and my cows together because it's kind of like a, what are you thinking? Um, but I mean, I get, what are you thinking quite a lot from a lot of people, so. But what happens is those calves grow so much faster. They're drinking milk as much as they want. When they're out on the pasture, the moms are teaching them how to graze, how to cross the creek, how to where the water tanks are, what the electric fence is. So the cows are teaching the calves as they're growing. The calves are growing healthier. And what I find too, it's that the calves are growing together. So the six calves say, at a, in a season on the farm, they're being raised together. And when I was watching last summer, one cow will sometimes walk out with the rest of the calves and like watch them, babysit them. And then the mothers will kind of change. So there's always one mother cow with the babies. And it's kind of like, wow, this is like a really great community that, you know, these, these cows are like really amazing to be helping each other out and to know that. So we've, we've kept that and then we do wean them and that's a hard day because they just want to cry and then at day two they're like, oh, I have a baby. I had no idea. So, uh, so it's, um, it's a nice little system on the farm. And it's so cute watching the, the calves will just like run and jump and they're just, I mean, it's really cute. So I love it. Are you getting asparagus right now out of your garden? I'm not getting asparagus yet out of my garden. I probably won't for another month, okay. I think, maybe three weeks. Because you guys are like a week ahead of me down here. Uh, and even my cousin down, she's in Antioch, Illinois. She's like three weeks ahead of us. Like she was having tulips a few weeks ago and I'm like, gosh. I mean, it's been cold this spring too. Yeah. It's terrible. Any other questions? Ramps. Ramps. Yeah. Do you have ramps? Do I you do. cook with ramps? I cook with ramps as much as I can. I don't have a ton of ramps up where I'm at. We don't have a ton of woods. Yeah. But when I want ramps, I come down to uh, the Roqua area. There's a place called Beanie Trees. Is anybody familiar yeah. with Beanie Trees? They do. Uh, they're fantastic people. I've known them for quite a while. And they do a ramp fest every year, if you're familiar. And I think it might be next weekend. Yeah. Or, yeah, or two weeks. And it is a, the most magical place. It's not that far from here. And you can go through, there's billions of ramps in their, uh, in their they have a maple orchard. Uh, and it's really cool. But I love making ramp pesto. My mom always says, if you're eating ramps, everyone in your household has to eat the ramps too. Because they're just so powerful in their smell. <laughs> but I love them. I saute them or pickle them too. Question? Oh, so, yeah. Is it, is it, what is a ramp? Oh, a ramp is, they call it a wild onion. So you'll see the, the root going in and then a green leaf coming out. Uh, so it's, in, yeah, or a wild leaf they call them sometimes too. But they, it, the, I read something somewhere that in Appalachia, they would go out and they'd gather the, the ramps in the springtime because they were like the spring tonics. Also with nettles too. I use a lot of nettles where I'm at. But after being winter it was such, you know, just not having any fresh food, people would go out to harvest all these ramps and it would give them like a, just a shock of nutrition all right there. Uh, and that's where we always pick nettles too this time of the year to make different things with nettles too. It's kind of fun. <laughs> well, I, oh, so question over here. I was just wondering, when you were younger, uh, did you milk cows by hand or were you fortunate enough to have a milking machine? <laughs> when the, I reason, the reason I asked is I was eight years old and I got to milk Rita and Brownie. <laughs> so I started pretty young. We, uh, Did you started, know what I mean? Yep. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. That's why I've had our parades. <laughs> <laughs> well, I grew up, my parents had a milking parlor. Okay. And I didn't even know what a stall barn was until I moved here. And my dad said, well, this is the barn you'll milk in. And I said, well, why did the cows all stand next to each other? I had no idea. And then I went from a stall barn, I took my pipeline out. And now I milk in a bucket, so if my, I have a unit though that I plug into a vacuum line. So, but soon I'm going reverse, so I'll probably be milking by hand. We have cats too, and we take them and put them in their face and love them. Yeah, I swear to you, milk in people's faces. It is. There's nothing that brings me more joy in life. And you, you know, you kind of like, like oh, I was. Uh, do you guys watch Wisconsin Foodie at all? Yeah. Yeah. So wait, the crew came out last summer, and Luke Sam was fantastic. Uh, he was. He's the host. And so he came out and we were milking cows together as part of the show. And I was like, Luke, I, I was really, really serious. I was like, I want you to get 
really close down here so I can show you exactly how to do it. And then I was like, shh. <laughs> oh, it was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have cookbooks? No. I, every time I sat down to write a cookbook, I was like, this is so boring. <laughs> um, and then I'm like, I should clean my house. Uh, yeah. So I just never, I never did one. Uh, yeah. But we did bring some cheese uh, for sale if you guys would like to try some. It's $20 for about a half a pound each. Uh, kind of a limited supply, but again, we will be in La Crosse on Friday nights. Uh, we are having kind of an open house garage sale at our farm next Saturday. Uh, if you're interested in that, it's about an hour and 15 minutes, I think. Hour and 13 minutes exactly from here. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. Dad, do you want to come on up and get cleaning up? <laughs> oh, Chrissy, talk about your open house in September. Oh, so, so my open house in September. So we always like to invite people kind of for a farm tour, get to know the cows and different things. So on September 18th, if you uh, write that down, I'll try to get some information to the different libraries and things. But September 18th, we will have uh, an open house at the farm. We'll probably do some demonstrations. My cousin is a pastry chef, so I'm hoping that she'll come and do some demonstrations for us. And then we will have another farm joining us called Wheatfield Hill. It's a mother and daughter. They've been farming on their farm for, their farm's been in production for over 100 years. They do organic beef, uh, organic vegetables. They're, she, Chris, she's doing these really cool pumpkins where she etches in things like welcome or happy autumn. So she'll be there with her beautiful uh, pumpkins and things like that. We're having Ken and Jay from Hay River Pumpkin Seed Oil there with their uh, oil. And then a few years ago, we did an episode with Tony DiMaggio from Sacred Blossom Farm. Uh, he does tea, he grows all of tea. And it's just, I mean, it's like knock your socks off good. So he'll be there too. And then I'm open to ideas of other things we should do. Uh, but I thought, oh, we'll have each of them come on, uh, kind of talk about what they're doing on the farm and things like that too. So that's September 18th. Do you have any uh, address? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's N45354 County Road E, Osseo. E is in Edward? E is in Edward, yeah. But don't come if we're not having an event because you don't want to see me in my stretch pants weeding the garden. <laughs> <laughs> well, fantastic. Well, come on up and take a look at the cart. Uh, and 